Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm fishing on the lower Warwickshire Haven today to a venue called Eckington. And it's a venue that we used to fish, or I used to fish a lot in winter leagues. And the original aim of the video was to demonstrate and explain about a, a great method called the straight lead. But the river had been really low and clear all week and it was looking like that was going to be the main method but typically with fishing uh, conditions change. Yesterday we had a lot of rain and overnight the rivers come up and coloured up quite heavily so I started on a straight lead but wasn't catching and switched over to a small ground bait feeder and I've been fishing for about an hour now and this is my third bream so it's actually uh, turning into a great session. It wasn't what we were planning, but as I mentioned, often with fishing, that's the way, so. You also see it's a bit windy today. It's the tail end of a hurricane and uh, the wind's blowing straight in my face, so. It's a bit of a wild day, but when I'm catching bream like this, I don't mind. Absolutely beautiful. Also got a bit of a cold, so sorry if I'm a bit croaky. I'll just unhook this bream and hold him up for you. Wow, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Proper slab that. It's the third one I've had and they've got to be four to five pounds. They're absolutely beautiful fish in such good condition and they fought really hard. Just absolutely love bream when you start catching them like this. You never know, we could have a good net of these today. The signs are looking great. I'll get that in the net. Well, my good friend and club chairman, Colin Harvey, um, suggested we fish this peg. And, uh, whoa, look at that. I've had, had a few knocks and uh, that's another bream. Well, Colin had put me on this peg because it's a very consistent peg and he's been proved right. We're in the middle of the boat meadow at Eckington. And Eckington's famous for its for its bream, particularly when the conditions are like this, when you've got some colour in the water and the river's rising, it's actually risen a few inches while we've been fishing already and the flow's picked up so I've had to change to a slightly heavier feeder. But my tactics to start with were once I realised that the straight lead wasn't working, was to put five or six feederfuls of ground bait and casters out and I'm fishing around about three quarters out, out into the river where I reckon it's about 12 or 14 foot deep, so it's a good depth. And uh, I probably had to wait around about 15 minutes for my first bite, which was a skimmer around about a pound. And now the bream have turned up and I'm getting indications nearly every cast. So there's obviously a good shoal of them out there. They're really fighting hard in this flow and uh, just beautiful bream. I'll just see if I can get this one up. He's hugging the bottom a bit at the moment. Here he comes, there's another proper slab. Nice one. That, that could be the biggest one so far. He's 
these river bream are absolutely beautiful they're so powerful obviously living in the river they've got to contend with the flow and uh, compared to bream that you catch in lakes I think they always fight a lot harder let's uh, hold him up for you look at that one that's got to be five pound Whoop. Just uh, hold him up once more and then we'll get him in the net. Absolutely immaculate. Alright then, let's get out again and see if we can catch another one. Hook bait I'm using, a, well it's pretty much classic bream bait really, I'm using a half a worm tipped off with a caster and I've been feeding chop worm and casters in my, in my feeder with the ground bait. These worms are on their last legs so I'm having to spend a bit of time to select the best one. I'm just taking the head off the worm then threading the worm onto the hook which is a size 16 hook and then tipping it off with a caster you can't really get much more of a classic bream bait than that I will try um, some other hook baits if I start to or if I'm not getting any bites I'll probably try a bunch of maggots like three red maggots and I might try some smaller bits of worm but at the moment that seems to be what they're taking I'm not using a massive feeder, I've just got a, a small size cage feeder on but it's got extra lead on, that's around about 30 grams in weight which is, which is um, an ounce. The 20 gram feeder I had on to start with was starting to, to bounce on the bottom as the flows increased and uh, I always think when you're bream fishing on a river you do want the the feeder to stay in position. You don't want to use a really heavy feeder, you want one that's balanced nicely to the flow, but I don't think you want it bouncing down the river through the bream. You want to ensure that the feeder's staying in one spot exactly where you put it. And all the bites I've had have been a classic drop back bite, so we've got a nice tension on the tip with the flow, a bit of a bow, and the bite's been a good positive drop back and the the bream hooked itself.
Wow, that, I think that just demonstrated the bike perfectly. The tip just sprung back and started bouncing and we got another bream. A positive like, bite like that's great when you're bream fishing because the last thing you want to be doing is striking at line bites and running the risk of perhaps foul looking a fish and losing it in the shoal. So I think the, the mentality of literally just sitting on your hands waiting for the bite to develop and I think what's happened is the, the bream's obviously picked the bait up, um, moved and dislodged the feeder, hooked itself against the weight of the feeder and then the fish is on. So there's no need to strike, it's just a matter of lifting the rod into the fish and then just guiding it away from the rest of the shoal. So it's good to be, you know, calm and not do anything too drastic when you're bream fishing because you can build a weight of fish and just take your time. It's another beautiful bream. Whoa! Probably should have used a bigger landing net, but. Wow, what a session. This, this is turning out to be, I really wasn't expecting it. We were thinking it would be a, a straight lead day, fishing the link lead and just trying to catch a, a, a respectable net of roach and skimmers. And uh, wow, just shows you with fishing, you never really know. I am uh, absolutely love, love catching these big bream. And, Eckington's famous for its bream shoals. I remember two years ago we had a, or two or three years ago, we had a river fest competition here and it was one with 125 pound of bream. You can see how building a weight like that could be achievable when you're catching beautiful slabs like that. There's another beautiful Avon slab. What a lump. Well, the rod I'm using is our CR10 11 foot number one. And as you can see, I've got another bream here. And it's an absolutely beautiful rod when you're bream fishing like this. At Sort of short to medium range, so anything up to about 35 metres. It's just an absolute pleasure to use. Uh, I am using a braid mainline, so a lovely soft rod like this with a progressive action is really essential. It just means I can have full confidence when I'm paying these big bream in the flow and, and nodding and fighting really hard, so the rod's really absorbing all the lunges really nicely. The wind's really getting up and it's blowing right into my face, so conditions aren't ideal, but the bream are having a great, a great feed today. That's actually number eight, so I've well exceeded what I expected from a hard day's fishing. Absolutely beautiful. When I'm catching big bream like this, I like to just unhook them in the net. Um, and I'll just transfer them straight from the net into the keep net. So I'm not handling them at all. I'm just minimizing any 
potential damage from perhaps dropping one or but you can see that fish is it's scale perfect I mean it, it looks like it's never been caught absolutely immaculate well, I talked about the rod um, the reel I'm using is uh, CS8 4000 which is actually a, a magnesium reel so a very lightweight but also really smooth and strong and um, I could probably do with giving this one a clean but they've, all our CS reels have proved to be so reliable uh, I've actually spooled it up with 010 millimeter braid and I've got a, a shot leader of um, 019 or four pound pro gold. It's quite a long shot leader, probably a little bit more than twice the length of the rod. Um, that's it really. I mentioned about the rig. I'm still catching on a, a worm tipped off with a caster. You'll notice that I've clipped up, which is often really important when you feed a fish in. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm casting slightly upstream, probably a metre upstream, and you can see I've cast to the clip, and I'm just holding the rod slightly upstream and up in the air until the feeder hits the bottom. The feeder's hit the bottom now, and I'm gonna just gently swing the rod round to the rod rest. And what that does is it, obviously casting straight to the clip, I haven't got any um, slack line to give the rod to create a bow but by holding the rod to the right letting the feeder hit the bottom swinging it round I'm actually creating a nice bow and that's obviously important we talked about the drop butt bites because having a bow like that will help enhance the bite um, and also I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the feeder if I perhaps tighten straight up to the feeder I'd need a heavier feeder to hold the bottom so that's how I get round feeding a bow on a river when I'm actually clipped up. Right, I'm going to take a break from fishing and show you the rig and setup that I'm using today. Um, I actually started getting a few roach, so I'll put a few big feederfuls of bait in and hopefully the breed will come back. So I mentioned about the braid, that's a 010 millimetre braid and I'll just show you how I attach the shot leader. So what I do is I just tie a simple knot in the end of the braid and then I just do a half blood knot of my shot leader onto that so it's really simple now this isn't probably the strongest knot or strongest way of attaching the shot leader but I like it because if I'm match fishing and I want to change the shot leader really quickly there's no quicker way of doing it. Um, I mentioned I was using this 4.4 pound shot leader. I don't need a heavy shot leader because I'm not catching, casting big feeders uh, long distances. And really the shot leader in this case is just a, literally just a shot leader to help take the savageness of the, braid, of the braid out when I'm playing these bigger fish like bream. And I'm actually going to put three turns of the shot leader on my reel and then you can see that's the shot leader there so it's a good two lengths of my rod and probably if I'm being honest I, I wouldn't need to fish braid today it's just that's what was on the reel when I came today so that's what I'm using I think I could have just used a four pound mono straight through um, so I'm fishing with a paternoster and the way I fish a paternoster is I make a loop on my shot leader or main line and make sure that you leave a good tag of line below that loop because that's what I'm going to attach my hook length to and obviously you want to dictate the length of the paternoster to the conditions and rig that you're using and I'm going to use a paternoster length around about four inches so I make the loop knot and that's it and I'm using this small cage feeder. I've used a bigger feeder to start with. 
which was taped up to get some bait in. And again, because I was planning to fish the straight lead, not the feeder, I haven't got all my feeders with me, so I've improvised a bit, but this feeder's heavy enough to hold the bottom in this flow that we've got today. I've obviously got a snap swivel on there so I can change to a different feeder if need be. So I mentioned that tail that I've left from the loop and I'm going to attach my hook length to that. And this is uh, 015 Pro Gold and I'm going to actually use a bit longer hook length than I was. I was fishing around about a three foot hook length and I'm going to start off with a bit longer hook length. And the way I attach my, nearly all my hook lengths together is actually the same knot as a loop knot. So by just hold, holding the two pieces together, I form the knot by going round my finger like that. I'll just do that again. Going round my finger and then make a figure of eight knot. I think it's such a neat knot. Uh, but absolutely I think the strongest knot so that's the figure of eight wet that and then trim the two tag ends and then I just tie the hook on so the hook I'm using today in the end is a 16 census b3 180 bz I use that for a lot of my bream fishing and uh, I'm just going to tie that on and we're back in business. Because so I'm using a worm and a caster, I'm finding this uh, 16 hook just to... Oh, I'll do that again. My fingers are a bit cold. I'll quickly tie that back again. So this is using the Drennan hook tire and I'll put 20 turns on that wet it and then that's tied so I was talking about the hook it's a 16 hook it's actually a big 16 and it's working well with the worm and caster cocktail I might go up to a 14 if I was really catching well but it is winter so I am fishing with a bit more finesse so that's the rig and I'm going to quickly just talk about the ground bait the ground bait it's predominantly this Bait Tech Special G Dark, which is a fish mill ground bait. Works really, really well for bream. And I've mixed that just 50 50 with brown crumb. And you can see there, it's a lovely fluffy mix. I've mixed it quite dry, but it's sticky enough to hold the bait in the feeder when I cast out. Right, let's get back fishing, try and catch another bream. Well there we go, I went straight back in um, into another bream so I think putting that extra feed in has brought the bream back in and we're back in business. It's been such a windy day today, we've had a real battering. And, uh, I think we're going to make this the last fish. It's been a phenomenal day really when you consider that we're fishing in tough conditions in the middle of winter and to catch such beautiful bream like this has been an absolute treat. This one's having a good fight down the inside so 
I better concentrate on netting him. What a wonderful day. What a lovely fish to end the session on. Absolutely amazing. What a surprise today's been. Just total quality fishing. Well, it just goes to show with fishing, you just never know. On such a cold winter's day like that, when we were expecting to catch just a few roach and perch, we had an absolutely amazing day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>